Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Welcome to part two of the Starry Log Cabin video. Now I'm going to show you how to make a cool pieced border with the extra pieces we had left over from the jelly roll. I took all of the remaining pieces from the jelly roll and I cut it up into two and a half inch squares. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the back of these squares. I like to use a pencil and I'm gonna mark right along the diagonal. And then I'm going to put one light and one dark together and I'm not gonna worry about which light and which dark. And we're gonna make half square triangles. So for this step, we're gonna sew on both sides of this line. We're gonna sew one quarter inch away. And then we're gonna sew one quarter inch away from the other side. And my presser foot is a quarter inch, so it conveniently goes right on that line. So I'm gonna do this with a whole bunch of these squares, and then we're gonna take it over to the ironing board, iron them, cut them, make the half square triangles. Now before I sew a whole bunch of these, I wanna get an idea of exactly how many I'm gonna need, so I don't do a lot of extra sewing. So here's my patchwork quilt and here's my border and here would be the cornerstones of the border. So if we're only going to put the pinwheels in these four sections, we're going to need eight of these because each one is going to give us two triangles, two half square triangles. Now I'm going to put an extra one in here and one here, 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 here. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to need ten half square triangles, triangle blocks. So I'm going to need to make 20, 20 of these. Now I'm just putting one light on one dark and I'm not worrying about which light goes on which dark because these pieces are pretty little. So it really doesn't matter that much which is next to which. Just grab one light and one dark and try to get a variety of fabrics. I like to chain piece when I'm doing an operation like this. It's the same thing over and over and there's no reason to snip all of these between the stitching. So I'm just gonna leave them on the machine and it goes really, really fast. And when I get to the end, I'm going to keep them together and I'm going to turn the whole thing around and sew along the other side of my line. So it just saves a lot of time. So that's the last one. I'm just going to pull all this over, turn it around. Now I'm going to sew down the other side of that line and it'll go really fast because the next piece is already there. Now sometimes it gets flipped upside down, so just turn it over and just keep going. Now I can just snip both of these sewing threads at the same time and stack them all up. Next step is to iron all of these and then we'll cut them apart. Even though these are really, really flat, I'll flip one over so you can see the stitching. I still like to iron them before I cut them apart because your stitching can make it pull a little. See, that one's not laying as flat as it could be. So I always iron them flat before I cut them apart. It seems like an unnecessary step, but it doesn't take very long and it just helps the accuracy. You really need to be accurate when you've got little teeny pieces like this. Okay, now we are going to put the glasses back on and we are going to cut right along that line. I use scissors right here because it's very quick. You can take it over to your cutting board and use your rotary cutter if you want, but it doesn't have to be real accurate because the stitching line is real accurate. So it doesn't really matter if we cut this a teeny bit crooked. So we're gonna cut all of these apart. Now we wanna iron all these seams to one side and we want to iron the seam allowance towards the dark side on all of them. There's two reasons for that. 
If you have a real light fabric like this and the seam allowance is going towards the light side, it's always possible that a little bit could show through there. The other reason we do them all to the dark side in this block is because that way when we make our pinwheels, all of our seam allowances will be spinning around the block, so to speak, and we won't end up with two facing the same way. So the easiest way to do this is to put the light fabric down, pull this over, give a little steam, a little steam press. The easiest way to get these all ironed correctly is to put the dark side up. You want the dark side on top on all of them. Now it's important to open this up and I almost finger press it a little right here to make sure that it does not distort and then iron it and give it a little steam. If you take your iron and just try to open it up with the iron like that, it makes it curved a little bit and then the whole thing is just a little bit out of whack. And that's fine if you wanted to recut it afterwards because some people do like to recut these after they make the half square triangles. But I find you can really get it accurate if you just open it up, make sure those seams are all the way along, they're going the right way, and then iron it. And now our seam is nice and straight and our seam allowances are all going the way we want. Now I'm going to trim off all these dog ears. It makes the patchwork much less bulky and it only takes just a minute so I really like to get that out of the way. Now we're going to take the half square triangles and we're going to pair them up and we're going to sew them together like this. And I'm going to do that with the whole stack because when you have two of them, we're going to turn them around and that will make a pinwheel. But it's easier to sew them all from the top edge. It's easier to match this seam if it's at the top. So I'm not going to worry too much about which colors I have, but I'll probably try to grab one brown and one green. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because the Patrick is pretty little. So since we ironed all of our seam allowances to the dark side, the top has the seam going that way the back side has the seam going the other way. So it's real easy to make these match up. You can feel with your fingers, they're kind of right nesting, right up next to themselves. Now we're just gonna sew a quarter inch down the side. I'm gonna chain piece again. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got them facing this way every time I'm gonna check. Once you have that seam in, you want to open it up and finger press all of them facing the same way. You want to make sure you've got a nice point up there. So just open it up, keep the seam allowance still going to the right, and just finger press it. You don't need to iron these. Now we'll take them in pairs and you just turn this around so that we're going to have a pinwheel there. So we're going to put these right sides together and we're going to want to match everything up real carefully. Again, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions. So I'm going to line this up at the corner here and start stitching a little bit. And I'm going to match it up down here. And I'm just going to be able to feel with my fingers if it's meeting in the middle there. If you can't feel, you're unsure, you can take a pin at this intersection here and you can stick it through. Let me show you. So I'm right where all those pieces come together, right at that point. You can stick the pin through there. Then you can stick it right here in the same intersection. And that'll help line everything up. So I'm not going to leave it there while I sew, but I'm just going to squeeze it against that pin and then I know everything is matched. So let me show you here. We've got a nice intersection there. I could have done my seam a little bit deeper and then that point would be matching a little bit better. So if that happens, you can just close it back up and you can restitch it slightly deeper. That's better, now that now we've got a better point there. So we're gonna do that with the rest of the pinwheel. So remember, turn it around, stitch it together. Now we need to cut the corner 
triangles. So we've got our little patchwork thing here and we need to cut these triangles and we want the grain to be going this way. So we're going to cut them in a square and we're going to cut along the diagonal. So I'm going to cut these three and a quarter inches. It's a little bit bigger than is absolutely necessary, but we're going to trim off any extra after we stitch it on. I'm going to use my weight here to help hold down my ruler and I'm going to cut a three and a quarter inch strip. And then I'm going to fold this and I'm going to cut some three and a quarter inch squares. Once you have your squares, you want to cut them just one time across the diagonal. So just line this up with the points. I don't need to use the weight for this because my hand is holding all over the fabric there. And now we've got the triangles we need. So we need to stitch one of these to each side. It's real easy to center them because we can put the point of the triangle right on this seam. So we're gonna line up this edge and we're just going to move this so that the point is right in the middle there and we're gonna use a quarter inch seam and sew right along the edge here. So you'll notice the triangle is a little bit longer, that's okay. Now we're going to do the other side. Same thing, line it up with the middle there. Now open up both of these and finger press with the seams going away from the center. Now we're just going to sew these two pieces on. Same method. Line it up on the edge, match that point to the middle, and use a quarter inch seam. These also are going to get finger pressed away from the center. Now we're going to take it over to the ironing board, steam press it really flat, and then we're going to trim off the dog ears and we're going to make sure that it's nice and square. It's ironed nice and flat. Now we want to trim off the dog ears and make sure it's the exact size that we want. This one turned out pretty square, but it's a little bit bigger than is necessary. And that's good because when I sew my next seam, I don't want to cut off these corners. I would rather have a little bit extra showing. So I'm just going to straighten it up. So here is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be putting this as a cornerstone for the border. And then we're going to be putting one right in the middle here one at the far corner. So we need to cut the strips that go in the middle. Now my blocks are five inches, so we're gonna cut five inch wide strips, and then we're gonna figure out exactly how big this piece is here. And that's the same size piece we're going to use here, and there, and all the way around the quilt with these cornerstone pieces right on every side. So we just need to cut a bunch of pieces to fit in here, and they're all exactly the same size. Now we're starting to really see how this is going to look around the quilt. And I do like to audition the border like this before I stitch it on because I might change my mind. I might think that it needs a different color here instead of this one. I am happy with how this turned out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch this into a border and I'm gonna stitch it onto the top. And I'm gonna make the exact same one and stitch it onto the bottom. Then I'm going to piece the border for this whole side and we'll stitch this one on and then we'll stitch the far one on and then we'll be ready to put it onto the quilting machine. I've got the border pieced onto that side of the patchwork. Now I'm gonna sew this one on the other side. We're just using our quarter inch seams, lining everything up. And I'm just going to finger press now. I'm not going to iron. 
Now we want this border exactly the length of our quilt here. So we're gonna double check. We're gonna make sure that matches to the middle and it does. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. There we go. So I'm going to pin this in the middle because I want that point to line up with that seam. So I'm going to pin it here. And I'm going to sew down this way. And then I'm gonna flip it over and stitch the rest there. So we've got that border all the way along that side there. Not centered quite as nicely as it could be. I'll probably move that over just a little because I'm pretty picky about that, but you can see how nice it looks. So all we have to do is put this same border on the far end and then make our borders for the sides with the patchwork here and here, and then the quilt is all done. Thanks for watching part two of our video on how to make the starry log cabin from a strip set. Be sure to watch part one so that you can see exactly how to make these patchwork blocks here. Happy quilting.